morning, everybody. Todd Metal at Weatherman here. Hopefully, everyone's doing well. So, yeah, yesterday everything kind of went wrong on my end, and apparently it was a pretty big day. So, apologies for anyone that was looking for me. Work went kind of crazy. After work went kind of crazy, and then my internet kind of did us in. So, apologies again. Really sorry. But in any case, onward we roll because we have a moderate risk today. And this is not a tornado driven moderate risk, although we do have a elevated risk. It's a 10% area with a hatched risk, very large 10% area too. We have central Missouri involved in here. So we have St. Louis, Jefferson City, Springfield over there. Then we look through a large part of Kentucky as well as southern Illinois. We also have southern tip of indiana and also parts of central and northern tennessee in that 10 percent hatch risk area the five percent area stretches all the way back even toward its areas like dallas waco texas through little rock arkansas we have chattanooga tennessee this covers the entire state here and we even have to look at springfield illinois and also hannibal missouri also do have a sneaky two percent cold core threat here towards Des Moines and Sioux Falls that we have to watch as well. Main threat for today is actually wind and hail. Both of these are at moderate risk levels. We have 45% areas for both of these er for um, both regions here. It's basically anywhere east of Springfield, Missouri, all the way to Nashville, we have a chance for significant damaging winds. There's a very high probability of that. We kind of talked about this the other day when we were looking at Monday's threat or Monday's event about how Tuesday and Wednesday looked and unfortunately things look like they've uptrended here also hail is a big thing as well so we could see some huge hail which is not as common for this area here but the probability is very high here so go ahead and get into the models really quickly as we're of course on a little bit of a time crunch due to my work schedule <laughs> We're going to try to do what we can to get things set up to be live. If we have a shorter day. That would be awesome. We'll see how it pans out, though. But in any case, this is what we have. This is our situation here. Here is our cyclone right here causing all of our problems here. We have an elongated cyclone. We end up getting signs of diffluence right around lunchtime and business would only pick up from that point and beyond i would say close to sunset is when we start to see a peak in the activity and this actually will end up lasting into the overnight here from the looks of it as well so what we're seeing at 500 we actually see a little bit of a uh, wind maximum popping up here as we get later into the evening I do think that we could see a couple of different rounds. The main round will probably be just after sunset, say about maybe six or seven o'clock central, to eight o'clock Eastern time, because we're pretty much right on the fringe of uh, switching time zones here. So the uh, time zone forecast may get it a little bit hairy, but in any case though, looking across the board here, I can clearly see signs of trouble here looking at 500 we go to 700 we already have evidence of a short wave popping up by the time we get towards mid afternoon into the early evening you can see a very large area of short wave activity over here towards the Ohio and Tennessee valleys and that only picks up as we get later into the evening and this threat like I said, it does look like it has the potential to persist into the overnight. I do think by the time we get into Thursday morning, the threat will start to diminish, thankfully. Now, here's where things kind of get interesting with that low-level jet, though. If we look at low-level jet, we do see some activity in particular right around West Central Tennessee and the Quad State regions here. So definitely need to be on guard as we continue to get later into the evening here we always tend to expect this low level jet to strengthen after sunset so i'm really kind of favoring tennessee right now based off what i'm seeing from h triple r here we could see a little bit more also around areas of missouri as well so 
could be a pretty active night just based off what I'm seeing here. If we look at moisture, it's no real surprise here. I almost felt like not even showing this, but I, I'm trying to keep it somewhat proper. I'm trying to keep, trying to keep uh, some sort of order here when it comes to looking at the parameters we look at here on the channel. And of course, dew points are important. We have those dew points getting into the 60s and 70s. Not even surprised there. It's been that way over this area for for seems like an eternity. So not surprised that we have an incredible moisture return over this area. We look at precipitable water. We're going to see a lot of precipitation out of these cells today. So the threat of flash flooding is very palpable as well. In some of these areas, we are going to have a heightened risk for flooding as well. So as we continue to go forward here, we're going to look at some severe parameters. So starting out with our mixed layer cape here we have incredible instability available surface temps are going to be pretty hot over here as well along with those dew points so it's going to help increase that cape as we get later into the evening here and like i said i'm really kind of favoring that quad state region as a point of interest maybe towards again west west central tennessee so we'll go ahead and click over towards clarksville do you see a decent zero to three Hodiograph here. Shear is not incredible. Like I said, it's not a it's not a red letter day like what we were seeing towards Oklahoma. And you saw how that semi verified kind of didn't. It was one really big tornado, but still, you always have to watch out for days like this just as much as you would have to watch out for days like what we saw uh potential like what we saw on Monday, I guess you could say. But one thing I look for on these skew T charts when it comes to damaging winds, it's D cape. Threshold number is about 700. We're well past that at this point at 1126. I do think there is potential for a squall line with embedded supercells and prefrontal cells. So multiple convective modes can make this a bit more dangerous. So this is later in the evening. Let's take this. Uh, Really intense area of Cape here. We're getting up to about 4,100. There we go. Some pretty good numbers there now. Also, 0 to 3 hodiograph looks really good. Shear is really impressive. So, like I said, this has the look of a discrete cell. Maybe also rain wrap from the looks of it. Also a high precipitation supercell. So, very dangerous sounding that I'm seeing here. So need to be extra careful over here if you're towards West Tennessee, toward pretty much anywhere within that quad state region as we mentioned before. So what we're gonna do now is go ahead and take a look at our bulk shear really quickly. This is our zero to one bulk shear. And what we're gonna be looking for is anywhere where we're getting above 30 knots around time initiation. So this would be right around 21 it could be around 18 but i'm really looking more so around 21 to 23 z we do end up seeing some areas kind of pop up here as we get towards oo z which would be about close to eight o'clock eastern time seven o'clock central again these are the regions of interest towards oh one and oh two that low level jet of course strengthens and the numbers start to go up if we get storms over this region we could have some big problems here so couple other things we'll look at really quickly of course significant tornado parameter we try not to read into this too much but this is just showing what the atmosphere could be capable of if we get a storm over it again like i said quad state region seems to have the highest probability right now looking at the significant tornado parameter 4.4 and there you go i mean pretty much as clear a signal as i would need to see and of course, also, like I said, likely to see some high precip supercells that have the potential to be rain wrapped. And then, of course, looking at our values here, shear is really impressive. Potential for maybe even a couple of long track supercells is not out the question here. I do think, of course, damaging winds will still be the main threat. But one thing that has me impressed again is the hail. The hail threat is very high for this region. You don't normally see significant hail parameters or ind significant hail indication parameters at a three. Typically the threshold number is one, 
When you go three times past that, you can expect some pretty large hail possibly, well above two inches in diameter, maybe even larger than that. So pretty big day expected. I do think I've gotten my problems resolved with the internet. Uh, it was a weird process without all of that works, the whole network extender, etc. Hopefully everything works and we'll be live today. It would be nice. But in any case, last thing we're going to do is go ahead and take a look at what our simulated radar could look like here. You can already see some storms starting to develop even as early as this morning. And then as we get into the afternoon, it's like this line of storms almost acts like a confluence band where you see outflow forming from here and then new storms will start to fire from that point. We, like I said, we could see some prefrontal cells develop just around or just after lunchtime. And then from that point onward, it's go time, it looks like. So we get towards 22Z, which would be close to 6 o'clock Eastern, 5 Central. That's when things start to pick up even more so. And like I said, I think peak time will be just after sunset. It'll be about 8, 9 o'clock Central time. And this threat will last into the overnight. I do think that, of course, damaging ones will be the main threat, especially as we get later and later into the overnight out into the evening, overnight hours. But tornadoes are definitely going to be a palpable threat as we get early on into the afternoon here. So here's hoping that we'll be able to cover this one. I do hope to see you at the stream if we can do that. But until then, it's been Tyler Metalhead Weatherman. Everybody stay safe, stay weather aware, and have a good rest of your day.